Hello and welcome to another episode of the Historic Challenges. And obviously as we always do, first things first, we've got to head onto the historical market and see what's available before we start the challenges. So we've got Danny Pedrosa 2010 for 3,000, we'll buy him. Valentino Rossi for 2,900 from 2012. Casey Sona from 2012, 26, not 26,000, 2,600. Which actually leaves us with 26,300 diamonds. So we've got plenty of diamonds. And if we can try and get another 15,000 here, we'll definitely be well on our way to having plenty, no matter what comes up. So we've got to do San Marino here today in the 500cc championship. So we've not got many riders to pick from. So obviously we have played as Arbor, we've played as Schwantz, we played as this Doan here. So obviously we've done three of them. So we've got Rainey, we've got another Doan, we've got Kaczynski, and we've also got Lawson. Now we seem to knock Lawson off a lot, so I'll go with Lawson. And uh, I'll head straight into the challenge now. So we're down here then on the grid. Wayne Gardner starting in second position on the Rothmans Honda there. Uh, it's still a work in progress, sort of the cigarette liveries and stuff for the uh, for the Project 20 mod. But hopefully some of them will be out in the newest update. But obviously as you can see we haven't really got any so far. Max Biaggi in 13th place there and myself in 6th place as Lawson. So let's get started then, try and get another victory and try and get another 15,000 diamonds. I really just hope Doan doesn't hit us off this time because that really annoyed me last time, as you probably could tell. Obviously we can't change the fuel or anything, so it was actually a bit pointless to put an extra lap in. I put an extra lap in just in case, but I forgot that I couldn't change the fuel anyway, so there's no point. We've had a terrible start, as we always do. Going down towards the first corner, we've got to brake nice and early because we've got to remember there's no engine braking on these bikes, of course. Schwantz on the outside there. Roberts just coming past us. We're back up the inside of Roberts on the power. Oh, the inside of quite a few though. The inside of three riders. The inside of four riders. Back up into fifth place by an Alex Crivier now. Norik Arbe going very slow on the inside there on the Yamaha. And we've got him very wide here into Rio. It's allowed Valentino to come through. But we're going to hold it on the outside of Valentino. The front coming up. But we've got it front of him now. So we're back up into fifth place. Norik Arbe up ahead of course. And then... I think Crivier in front of him, I'm guessing Dewan is in second, I think Gardner's in first, it's usually how it seems to crack off. Oh, we've got him very, very wide once again, obviously still trying to get used to this bike. That's probably going to allow Valentino to come back past, yes it has, and Rainey as well, but we're back past Rainey, can we get past Valentino? I don't think so, but we're both closing up to Arbe, and I've gone in wide again. I'm really, really not used to the lack of engine brake on this bike. So, when, oh, another Kajiva on the, the inside there, but we're now down to 8th place, so we actually had... A bad start, sort of recovered from it, but then we've also dropped back down again. So we come towards Curvone then. Because you can't take Curvone flat like you can nowadays. We're trying to go around the outside. Oh, Roberts Jr. comes up to Rainey. And is he going to get past him? That's put us on a very awkward line. Roberts Jr. has gone past Rainey. I'm close up on Rainey. We've hit Rainey. We've kind of hit him off there, actually. That's, yeah, not great. Didn't mean to do that. I'm sure we hit Ra uh, Rainey wide in the last episode as well, if I'm not mistaken. At least we're not hitting Lawson this time, because we always seem to collect Lawson in something. Gardner leads, doing second, Crivier third, Rossi fourth, Arbe fifth, Robert sixth, and myself in seventh there. Obviously, Arbe has really, really dropped through the pack. He started on pole, and obviously, uh, Rossi caught up to him very easily. Roberts has now also caught up to him pretty easily, so it won't be long before Arbe's really near the back of the pack. So here we are in the substitute of Roberts then, to the inside. On the brakes nice and early, we're going to try and outbreak him there. We've gone in a bit wide again. So hard to get these bikes stopped. That's the difficult part about them. It's not that hard to get the power down. It's just getting them actually stopped. But once again, we've got the run on Roberts with the lift there to not hit him. You can see the leaders are really getting away ahead. And obviously, Arbe's slipping back towards us as well. I need to try and get past Roberts and then try and get past Arbe. And then we've got to hunt down Valentino. So we've got past Roberts now on the exit of that corner. Coming towards Caverne once again. We actually had a lot more speed through Caverne than the AI did. Although this time we didn't really. But then on the run past it. So we've passed Arbe now. So Arbe... Must be running, I don't really know. Oh, we've run really, really wide. Oh, no. Oh, we have caused a big crash. So that was, it wasn't going that badly until the high side, of course. We would have still been able to get something out of it. But lights and away we go. So hard to get these bikes off the line. The AI do it so well, I don't know how. Because we barrel towards the first corner, actually. We've not had a terrible start. We're up into fifth place. We actually have gained place, even though we obviously lost position to Crivier as well. Crivier trying to go away with the other two Hondas. Oh, Schwantz sticking up the inside there. Don't know how we didn't get any damage, but Schwantz is going to get past us. No, we've got the run. Arbe is going so slow. Straight past Arbe. He was going so, so slow in the previous attempt as well, so quite why he is, I don't know. So we must have done a pretty decent job if that bike is actually that slow on the straight. So we did a decent job. 
to nearly win. Kenny Jr. is out of crash in the background, so that will probably be him out of the race. It's a very fast place to crash. Although I suppose not as fast as Cavone or something like that. Oh, I think Gardner's run a bit wide. It's allowed Doohan to catch back up to him a little bit. And Crivier trying to stick on the back of them. So at the end of the first lap then, we are 1.4 seconds behind Crivier. So we definitely have to get our head down and try and bring that back. So here we go then. Up towards the line. Pass start to Gardner. 35.3. We did a 35.4, so we're slightly slower. So up towards the line this lap then. I think we're going to be doing the fastest lap. 35.4 again, actually. So we just close up to Crivier. You see Crivier's dropped back a little bit from Doohan and Gardner. It looks like Doohan's going to do his move on Gardner. He seems to do that every race. He starts a bit behind him. You know, so catches him a little bit, sits there for a little bit, and then gets even closer and starts to make a move. But we've passed Crivier now. Through turn three. Into four. Rio. I was just hoping Crivier wouldn't dive bomb me, to be honest, which he hasn't done. And it looks like Gardner is now holding up Doohan quite a bit. So Doohan will definitely be looking to make a move as soon as he can. Doohan's going for it on Gardner. I think he's got the move done. Yes, he has. It's really weird. These races all go exactly the same. Gardner goes to the front first. Around the outside of Gardner, we've gone straight past him. Oh, we've gone in very hot into Tremanto, though. That's going to allow Gardner back through. Yes, it is. Is it going to allow Crivier back through? Almost, actually. Not quite, though. Yeah, as I was saying... These races all go exactly the same. Gardner hits the front at first and then gets sort of reeled in by Doohan. Or Doohan sort of goes with him. Then Gardner just slips back because he runs out of tyre. It happens every single time without fail. It's so strange. It's like these are super scripted. I'm trying to look at the inside of Gardner there, but we couldn't quite do it. Here we go then towards the Masano corner. He's really still on the straights, it seems. Oh, we've kind of sat him up there. Right, so we've gone underneath him. Because actually, he was really, really still on the straight, but then put up quite a bit, bit of a fight on the brakes. Tried to squeeze me towards the corner, but I was already on the inside, so I just bullied my way through a little bit there. So Doohan now has got a bit of a gap, but we've got to try and catch him up. Doohan has not taken a very good line through that corner. We are closing on him quite a bit. Seems like we've definitely found our footing now, unless the AI have just slowed down a bit. It's quite weird. They, they sort of just speed up and slow down randomly at different points of the race. Like, at, on the last couple of laps, you can bet that Doohan's going to be a, a lot quicker than us. So we're going to have to make us move quickly and not sit behind him because we've been burnt by that in the last race. We only just got past him and then he rammed us out of the way and then he upped his pace so we couldn't catch him up. Here we go on the exit of Cavone on the inside into the next part, turn 12. On the inside to 13, we've died at the inside, we've got off the track, that's what I'm doing straight back through. So that's one attempt gone already. Oh, the rear is gone, the rear is absolutely gone but we've actually sort of managed to get it turned around the corner using that. As we go towards Misano corner, is it going to be similar to Wayne Gardner here on the inside? Not quite. We're not quite close enough to do the move. We've clipped him a little bit, so we've got a bit of damage now. Bit of a wheelie out the last corner as well, trying to get the front wheel down. So Doohan is putting up a bit of a fight here. Here we go, down towards Rio. We've got the run on the inside of Doohan. We're not going to get stopped into Rio, though. Neither's Doohan. Doohan's nearly hit us on the back, actually. I think we might have moved over on his line a little bit, but to be honest, I'm not too bothered about being a bit aggressive with Doohan. Obviously, it is a different one than in the previous race, but it's still Mick Doohan. And the AI performance seems to be identical, it just seems to swap out the uh, the model and the textures each time. So we go into Quircher, and we've gone a bit wide into Quircher. Yes, we definitely have. Bit of a wheelie, it's probably going to land back through, looking behind us. Not yet, but here he goes, I can hear him. Is he going to get the inside? Oh, we've lost the rear. Yes, he is, so doing back up into the lead once again. But we should be able to get him here. On the straight side by side towards Curvone, it's going to be whoever backs out first, although we've just got in front of him anyway before Curvone, so I guess it was sort of him that backed out, but he's back on the inside, oh, Doohan, he's taking that corner way faster than he has at any other lap, so Doohan really has upped his game here, so we're definitely going to have to attack him where he least expects it, because he knows where we're going to go for it now, here we go towards Masano, corner on the inside of Doohan there, into Masano, corner, we couldn't quite get the rear stopped, and there goes Doohan, back past us once again, we are close to him now as we start the seventh lap of nine. 137-1, so we are really slowing the pace down by about two seconds a lap. And I think that's why Crivier and Gardner are actually starting to close up to me again. So we go through turn two. Crivier is looking at the inside. But can we get the run on Doohan through the Variante de Parco down towards Rio like we did on the previous lap? Here we go. Going towards Rio, hitting the brakes for Rio. We're not close enough to go for the move this time on Doohan. Doohan's sliding that rear end. I'm sliding the rear end as well. Crivier is trying to go underneath. We've now got a two-tenths penalty to contend with as well, which is, you know, not helpful at all. But we've got the run on Doohan once again, down the straight. Here we go. Hitting the brakes nice and early. I don't want to go in too hot or anything like that. Although my rear end is really not wanting to stop. 
Because obviously a lot of first gear to try and get the bike stopped. Maybe that's the mistake there. But Gardner looks like he's gone back past Crivier. It's there, six tenths behind us now. After Tremonto, they're trying to get the power down compared to Doohan. I think Doohan's got it a little bit better. This might be the part where Doohan tries to up his pace, so we need to make the next move stick. It needs to count as we go towards Caverne once again. Doohan has upped his pace through Caverne a lot. So we're going to have to go for it once again. This will be the third time we're going for the move into Misano Corner, I think, now. We're not close enough this time, though. We're going to have a look, a little look at the inside. A little bit of a tap with Doohan there. That's probably helped him out, if anything. As we come up towards the line once again, we're sat behind him for yet another lap. I always find it so difficult to get past him, but we've upped the pace again by quite a bit. 35-8 once again now. So obviously we did the 37 the lap before. So we go into the second part of the first complex. We're flicking the bike over. We're going to get out the inside to the Variante de Parco. He's looking over his wrong shoulder there. Up into the lead we go once again on the penultimate lap of this race. And he's hit us at the back into Rio. Doing strikes again. Doing strikes again. Hitting me out the way. But this time it's not worked for him at all. He's still got the run on us, but I'm not having any of it. McDoohan's trying to make it work. And I don't really want him to do that. So McDoohan once again with a bit of a bash has gained a bit of time back and now he's got the lead. But I'm not sticking for it this time. I'm not standing for it. So once again into Masano corner. We're not close enough. Obviously we're much further behind than we have been previously. So hopefully we can try and get him on the last lap here. So we're about to start the final lap. 36-3 for myself though. Obviously we did get bashed off by him on that lap. Here we go. We have massively close up on him in this section through the Variante de Palco. I'm not going to be friendly this time, that's for sure. We've hit him. We've hit him wide. That was, I'm going to tell you that was deliberate. I did hit him off on purpose. We've now got moderate damage, but I think Doohan might be out of the picture now. No, he's still in second place. He's still only a couple of tenths behind us there. Obviously, we've got quite a bit of damage now. But I wasn't having that from Doohan hitting us off once again to try and win the challenge. We're coming into the last corner then for the final time here at Masano. And a Misano corner then. Bit onto the green, not towards the line. We're going to win the, the challenge here in the 500cc challenge at Misano. Hopefully we do. Yes, we did it. Even with the penalty, we had the gap to do it at the end there. So we beat him. We gave him a taste of his own medicine. Obviously, he tried his tricks again. He hit us off at Rio Hairpin. But luckily, we managed to stay on the tarmac this time. So I had to go through the grass. And he didn't actually quite get back in front of us. But then when he did, obviously, he got the run because I took a bit of a... You know, I tried to cut him up, cut his run up. Which again was a little bit dirty from me, but I'm not, I am not. I was not having him doing the same thing again. And then on the last lap, I knew he'd probably try and hit me off at Rio if I overtook him before it. So I just I broke a bit earlier and then let off the brakes and just went into him. Because I was not having him hitting me off again at the hairpin. But we managed to beat him this time, so a taste of Doohan's own medicine there. Managed to beat him. And uh, everyone finished. I don't think anyone actually crashed in that race, if, if I can recall correctly. I think Did Kenny Jr. crash? I don't think so, because it looks like he's well within the pack, so... Yeah, no crashes in that race. Very, very interesting. I suppose it's one of those tracks where there weren't particular places you could high side massively. Not many hairpins. And obviously, uh, Australia, there was there weren't too many crashes then either. More that they were hitting each other at the back. Arbe actually ended 8th then, despite seeming to have no pace at all. Uh, Wayne Garden managed to hang on to 3rd ahead of Crivier then, so he got back in front of Crivier after obviously we squeezed him out earlier on. So yes, Kenny Jr. actually did crash, so have a look at this. He hits our bait, high sight out the corner, down he goes. I think he gets clipped by someone else, although I'm not 100% sure. The bite just barrels through the gravel. This is from onboard Biaggi, you can see it a bit better. So he clips our bait, high sights, and then she might have got hit by McCoy there. We'll have a look. Oh, it's McWilliams. McWilliams hits his bike. Yeah, that's what sends it off into the gravel. We slow it down on board with McWilliams. You can see high sides there from the contact. The bike's in the middle of the track. Williams tries to go to the right of it, but then it moves over to the right and he just hits it. Then it blasts over to the right hand side then. So then we got our 15,000 diamonds, which brings us up to 41,300. So we've got so, so many of them now. So on the market, nothing actually too expensive. So Caparossi 2003 will buy him. McCoy 2000 and the Honda Pons team from 2004, which takes us down to 35,400. So we've still got plenty plenty to spend. So then, that's it for this video. I hope you did enjoy that one. We had another good battle with Doohan. Obviously, once again, he uh, he did hit us off and then I will admit, obviously, then I went and hit him as well, but he needed I needed a bit of vengeance on him for the last time and obviously then he did it again which annoyed me even more, so I made sure that I was not going to lose this time by him bashing me off out of the way. And to be honest, it probably didn't do much. It probably harmed me, if anything. It meant it, so I had more damage, so the bike handled a lot worse on the last lap. But whatever, sometimes you got to dish something out when people hit you off.
But like I said, I hope you did enjoy that one. I hope you enjoyed the rest of your day. I hope you're all staying safe, and I shall see you in the next video.